Hi and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Uh, in this video we're gonna look at uh, the Cripple Magnus. Uh, I posted this fly on my Instagram account. Uh, you can check out my, my, the link to my account in the description. And you guys were like, please can you do a tutorial on this fly? And I, of course I can. Uh, and also this is a fly I'm using. I'm using it a lot and it uh, catches me fish, uh, you know, uh, when when I fish in the, this is, this is kind of a, this is a, a stickleback pattern. And uh, when, when I fish on the spots, I know they're sticklebacks. This works great. So yeah. And uh, as always, <laughs> I'm going to put the link to skip the intro. Uh, you guys really like that, so and also for me, then I then I know I can do a long intro if I want to, and you can just skip it. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm gonna put a link to my sponsor. My sponsor is Nordisk Fiskutstyr, and uh, and uh, and also a link to my Patreon page if you want to become a patron. So yeah, this is the Cripple Magnus. It's a it's a simple fly, and it's also a fly that. Uh, uh, it, it's, you know, uh, the inspiration comes from Magnus, uh, and, uh, but I was thinking I want to tie a fly with, with, uh, some of, uh, you know, when I tie Vaskebjörn, I get a lot of these, these tips. Look, I have a whole box and I, I'm sure I have more somewhere and I hate to throw away stuff. I just, I don't, you know, and I was thinking, can I do something with these hackles and there's the result, the Cripple Magnus. And also it works great, so yeah. And uh, I also like uh, the fly, you know, it moves, it dives in the water and something small with some, some grizzly fly with some white and olive, it never seems to go wrong. You can see, you know, Vaskebjörn is also a grizzly fly with something white and, you know, small and dives seems to work great. Magnus as well. It's also a small fly, grizzly, you know, so this is kind of, that's why I called it Cripple Magnus. Okay, so let's go through the materials. Uh, for the hook, I'm using the owner Oculite. This is the size 6. It's a beautiful hook. If you don't have that hook, uh, you can easily use the TMC 811S in a size 6. Um, as you see, this hook is a little bit it's a little bit bigger, but uh, a size 8, it's too small because if you have a size 8 hook with the medium beach and ice, it doesn't, I don't think it worked as well because of the, 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 the gap between the ice and the hook point. It, yeah, so, but you could try, but perhaps you then should go over to a small beach and ice. So yeah, that's the hook and for the for the hackle I'm using tips, hackle tips and I save up hackle tips from you know size 4 and size 6 and size 8 Vaskebjörn. And and also if I'm using grizzly hackle in any other fly I put it in a box. So we're going to use uh, a couple of tips and one for the hackle and for the dubbing I'm using ice stub. This is the same ice stub I use for Fnugge and for uh, Pink Lady and so on. Um, I'm always thinking like that, as you know. I like to, you know, try to use the materials I already got, so... But this is actually a mix. This is not a pure uh, ice tub UV pearl. Because I think the UV pearl is, for me, I think it's almost too much. So I like to mix out ice tub pearl with ice tub UV pearl. I mix them uh, about 50-50. Uh, uh, so, you know, the fly, it looks better. I think it looks better. So that's what we're using. And also we're using, uh, this is light bright, golden olive. This is not a dubbing. These are for, you know, this is stuff for, uh, for the fly I'm tying Runa's Deceiver. But this is the only, olive flash I got actually so I was thinking hmm I'm just gonna use this and it's hard it's not so hard to dub the long fibers are long so it works great if you don't have this you can use any other olive color uh, synthetics okay so that's uh, the front part and we're gonna use bead chain eyes in silver medium 
and for the you know for the forehead <laughs> i call it the forehead this is a important uh you know uh, step of the fly because this gives the fly so much movement and what i was thinking was you know when you pull the fly in the hackle in the back goes like schmuck 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 but if the fish come you know after the fly i won't take it and you stop uh, pulling the fly you know just waiting for the fly to, to take uh, waiting for the fish to take the fly <laughs> i'm getting excited <laughs> these these forehead fibers <laughs> sorry they move like this when the fly drops and i'm thinking that you know it's a trigger point so this is a important element of the fly and the, and here i'm using leftovers leftovers these are the fluffy part you can see down here these are the fluffy parts uh, from the start of the hackle you know save everything so we're going to use that that's it i think uh, we should do a quick sip of coffee uh, even though i don't think i need any more coffee I'm gonna do one for you guys. And cheers, thank you for all the support. Mm. Nice, good coffee. Let's go. So here's the fly. It's a nice little fly. You should really, really try it. I've caught a lot of fish on it. Simple, simple fly. So put in a hook in your vise. That's not right. I want it leveled out as good as I can something like that and just some white thread this is the 60 I think this is Semperfly yeah I also have some uni thread left I'm gonna use every every bit of it so and we're gonna start uh, off by tying in our, 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 our thread and all the way back to the uh, barb <laughs> sorry it's been a while <laughs> so we're gonna line up two hackle tips and we're gonna take the dull side of the hackle i'm gonna pair it up with another one so the shiny part is out and we're just gonna glide them back and forwards till they are aligned and pull out get into the hackle stem like that I'm gonna make sure these are not too long. And that's perfect. That's perfect. Don't do it too long because then the hackle tips will just, you know, it won't work. So put it in and then pinch around the hook and the hackle tips. Go up, down, slack turn up and tighten up. This will prevent the hackle tips from spinning around, okay? And I can see my thread. It's unwind. I'm gonna rewind it. Snip off the tips. Tie down the butts. The hackle butts. Yeah, hackle butts. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's nice. That's okay. That's okay. And then we're gonna put tie in our hackle tip. And and here I'm using a fairly big one i mean these are from the size 4 waskebjorn you can also use smaller one the most important is that you use the tip you got if you got some thinner tips use the thinner tips if you got a you know that if you have a, a not this wide just use it that's kind of the idea of the fly so tie it in by the tip go back make sure you don't tie down your tail i think i'm about there, go forwards again, and we're gonna take three turns. I think three turns is enough. One, two, and three around, and we're gonna lock it down. Hold the thread tight. Take it off, pull everything back, and tie it down. No, no, don't tie down the hackle. I don't mean to tie down the hackle, just the thread is, you know, the last turn, the thread needs to be snugged up to the hackle stem, okay? Don't tie down the hackle stem. You really don't want to do that. It's the same as we do with, uh, you know, Vaskebjörn. The same thing. You want them to flare out like that because they are gonna, they're gonna pulse in the water. Very important, okay? 
And I can see these are not perfect, but I'm, I'm going to let it go. It's okay. It's okay. So we're going to tie in our bead chain eyes. And I'm going to go forwards and back again. And the distance I'm looking for is the same width as one of the bead, uh, bead in the bead chain. So uh, what I sometimes like to do is just hold it and check out. It's, it's a little bit hard, but that kind of gives you an idea where I want to tie in the bead chain. And we're going to just do one figure of eight, pull up the thread and just let it go around. And I just going to do some figure of eights. And I'm making sure it's nice and tight. Figure eight, figure eight, figure eight. And then we're going to do under, under, under. Just tighten it, tighten it up like that and go back and I'm going to use super glue. Uh, I've been using super glue for a few years. I can remember, I think some of the first uh, tutorials I did. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Ooh. <laughs> I almost made a mistake. Did you see the amount of super glue? I've done that a couple of times and, and my bobbin <laughs> is over here. And I drop the the, the 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 super glue. The little drop comes off, and it hits my tying thread. And then you can just throw it away. So I'm sorry. I almost made a mistake again. Oh. So I'm gonna just gonna do like this. And this super glue, I I'm not I don't know if you can get this in the. I think you can get it in Europe, but this is amazing. This super glue. It's it's so hard. It kind of it it glues everything. So I've been using that glue for uh, I think three years now, and I use it on Vosky burn and everything, and they never come off, never ever. Okay, so just make sure you got nice super glue, and as you also also can see, I'm kind of dividing the glue over the body because now we're gonna dub, and this glue is actually gonna help us to make a durable fly. And we want that. So now we're going to dub uh, the body. And as you see, I, I like to start in the middle here because I, when I'm used to tying a dubbing body, I want to go over it a couple of times because then it will, you know, be much more durable. And guys, make a thin, thin, thin dubbing noodle. Look at this. So thin dubbing noodle. Then you have full control. Okay. And now the super glue is going to help us pull it and twist, pull it and twist, pull it and twist, lock it down. Don't make a bushy body. A stickleback does not have a bushy body. <laughs> thin, thin, thin. Then you have full control. You see? And then uh, we're going to dub the front of the fly. And here's the trick. If you're going to try light bright, make sure you don't <laughs> take out too much. I mean, it's like seven fibers or something, 10 fibers, just, you know, very, very small amount because the fibers are long and just dub it on. It actually works great. And, and by using these fibers, the dubbing noodle automatically gets very thin and it's easy to dub, but don't get too much on there. Take your time, do it, do it properly. As you can see, I have a nice thin dubbing noodle and I'm going to go a couple of turns in the back, cross over in the front, cross over, uh, go in the front, cross over, go under, do a cross underneath. And yeah, we're going to finish off in the front. I think that's perfect. Make sure you have a couple of millimeters here in the front because now we're going to switch thread. I like to finish off the fly with the red thread, you know. It's, it's almost been, you know, the red thread is like almost my signature. <laughs> I don't have it on all my flies, but you know, yeah. So we're going to finish off with the red thread. And now it's important that your thread are all the way back uh, with the bead chain because we're going to tie in the, what should I call it? It's like uh, forehead, forehead feathers. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, let's let's just keep on tying, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. So here 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 you can see I really like the 
Make sure when you, you're gonna tie in this, it's just not only marabou. Try to pick out the part where you have some fibers left of the hackle. That's the perfect spot. So I'm just gonna pinch it like that and pull it off. I'm gonna measure and I really like them to kind of go a little bit past the hook bend. That's perfect because then the fibers will really make some movement in the water when you stop pulling in the fly, you know? Yeah, so measure a little bit longer than the hook and snip it off, spin your bobbin. And then when I say spin your bobbin, that's, that's a, I think I've shown you this before, but when you try to tie in stuff, the thread likes to, very often the thread goes forwards and it's so annoying when you're trying to tie in like this when I, I need the thread to tie in something. You see, the thread wants to go forwards. So spin your bobbin and I spin, if I look down on my bobbin, the bobbin goes anti-clockwise. And as I like to say, when I have my thumb on the bobbin, I like to spin the thumb to the right, okay? If you do that a little bit, when you tie in, the thread will go automatically go back. So spin your bobbin. Like that. Now look. Push it. You have full control. Ooh, two, three, four. Ra -da 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 -da. Use your nail. Divide the fibers a little bit. And it's perfect. Finish off with a nice red head. A nice red head? A nice red head, yeah. I kind of think the red head is my signature on my flies. I was actually thinking perhaps I should do this with the Hoover shrimp and every other fly as well, but we'll see. So there you go, as you can see. And I'm gonna use my fingers to rub it a little bit so it kind of falls down. You're doing, I've shown you this before, but the fiber goes like this. Boom, okay, that's perfect, that's perfect. Oh, I'm getting excited and I'm gonna use my lighter very fast and I'm gonna take the heat. I use the heat to manipulate the fibers very fast, boom, and hold it. And the heat will actually manip manipulate the fibers to go back. I also do this with Vaskebjörn and every other fly I'm tying, so. But don't, make sure you don't set your fly on fire. <laughs> yeah, be careful so you don't burn yourself. And then we're gonna finish off with some varnish. And this fly is finished. It's finished. Boop. I really like it's important. Uh, you're gonna use these flies in salt water. I give this uh, these flies minimum two times with the with the you know with varnish because the salt water will eat up the tying thread. So when this has dried a little bit, I'm gonna give it one more time, one more go. And I like to show you this. This is a dubbing needle. You know, when I rinse off my dubbing needle, this is a toothpick holder, you know, this is from Yuldan. And in this, I have just put in some of these stuff you use to cleaning your pots when you've done, you know, some cooking. I stuffed it in there. And it's so perfect to rinse the needle. And also I have a small magnet. Okay, uh, this is the Cripple Magnus. As you can see, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely fly and it works great, really great. And I love the idea of using, you know, leftover materials. I love to do that. And I spend a lot of time and you know, thinking, hmm, what do I have in the box? Hmm, what can I do with this? And so, and this is a, fish catcher okay let's let's finish off this uh, video cheers mm. lovely 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 and as always I'll put a link uh, to my sponsor Nudis Fiskutstyr and to my patreon page and also the full material list of the fly Go down and you can see what I use and also I'm gonna put in some substitute if you don't have the you know light bright I'm gonna check out I think it's something like ice tub olive or something yeah so I'll put in that okay I think we're done and um, yeah I'll see you in the next one okay bye